Welcome to a short video presentation on a product called Star UML. Uh, Star UML is an open source uh, UML modeling tool. Uh, many people might have heard of SNL Rose and other products. This is something similar to that. Uh, of course, being an open source product, it will not have the bells and whistles of uh, what you see in SNL Rose and other uh, commercial um, UML tools. But this tool is good enough for us to learn and the best thing is it is free. So let me start uh, star UML and then we'll see how to learn the different kind of diagrams that is possible in star UML. Uh, although in this video presentation, I will mainly focus on uh, developing use case diagrams. So if you are uh, very keen, you can always um, learn other uh, diagramming techniques. So I'm choosing the UML components approach uh, because that is what would be uh, the taught in the program. So let me do this. So we'll see star UML coming up. Okay, now we see uh, the star UML. So if you see here on this side, you have all kinds of diagrams uh, available to you. So you have business concept diagram, business type diagram, use case diagram, sequence diagram, uh, role wise sequence diagram, collaboration diagram, state chat diagram, activity diagram, component diagram, deployment diagram, and there is something called component structure diagram also. So many kinds of uh, diagrams are possible to be drawn. And here we will mainly try to draw um, this I will draw, I will close, I will just keep use case diagram. Because this is what I am going to demo it to you. So let me just close this. So if you see on this side, uh, we, you have all the icons that we have learned like an use case, actor, Association, directed association, generalization, dependency, include, extend and system boundary. So the first thing that I will draw is the system boundary. So you just click on system boundary, come and click here. So if you double click, it gets uh, hooked on to that. So please avoid that and then you have to come back and select it again. So now I'm going to make the use case diagram, uh, the system boundary little big. So mainly system boundary is the boundary of the system, whatever happens inside the system is um, is part of the system and what is outside is always uh, outside the system. Then I click on use case and I click on this. Uh, so I get a use case name. So the first use case that I am going to write is for a training process. So I'll say publish calendar. So I have a use case called publish calendar. Then I have another use case which is to um, manage logistics or I'll say arrange logistics which is basically to organize for the training and other things and then I have another use case which is to conduct workshop. So if you look at this, so if you see this, um, this use case is dependent on uh, this one you have to be a bit careful about all the connections that you do because uh, being an open source tool it is bit clunky so you have to um, do your practice and second thing I strongly suggest you always have a mouse uh, which will allow you to uh, work better. So now I have three use cases which is publish calendar, arrange logistics and conduct workshop and if you see Arrange Logistics is dependent on Publish Calendar. That means unless I have published my calendar, I cannot do logistics. Similarly, conducting the workshop is dependent on Arrange Logistics. That means unless logistics are arranged, workshop cannot be conducted. Then I'll have different, different actors. So this is my training head. So this is my training head. So I can put a directed association between this and this. That means my training head publishes uh, the calendar. So just to make it little neat. So maybe I'll move it a little up. Uh, it's, it's not that great in drawing, but I think this is good enough. Ah, okay, I got a straight line. Good, so the next actor for me would be the training admin, uh, one who is doing all the logistics arrangements. So this is the training admin and the training admin conducts or uh, manages this particular activity. So again, I'm going to make it a little neat. 
okay just let me see if i can make it straight okay doesn't matter then i have another actor which is the faculty so this is the faculty and uh, the faculty would conduct the workshop okay so i think when we conduct the workshop or arrange logistics we would always use another use case um, which would be to find the venue because many times uh, um, when uh, sorry i think it see it's now stuck so that's why it's creating so many use cases i'll just delete all this uh, things and uh, the find venue arrangement would be used during uh, arranging logistics or conducting the workshop so that would be called an include use case so i will just say uh, this is something one message you will always get so be careful so i am going to include this particular use case always here and after conducting the workshop maybe the faculty would like to uh, print the attendance seat um, so it's an optional field so I'm going to create another one saying print uh, feedback uh, or attendance so this is an optional thing so for the reference so I can say this is an extend use case so that means it's not mandatory and can be extended if required then we will also have uh, one second let me take it here let me take it here we'll also have another actor who would be participating in the workshop which will be participant and uh, the participant uh, is also participating in this particular workshop so this is how you basically draw your actors use cases uh, relationships between them and you can actually draw even all other kind of diagrams which uh, can be done by you so this is how the system is so simple and uh, the good part is you can simply select this diagram and say control c and you can uh, start a microsoft word document and then simply paste into into it so so you can say the use case plan or manage workshops and you can simply paste here so you can draw it uh, in in star uml and take it to your requirements document to be published okay thank you